Hey guys, it's GearKid660 here, and right now I'm going to be doing a review on my Iceco Go 20 liter fridge. I would classify it under a small fridge freezer variety, which is uh, roughly between 11 to 20 liters range. Um, what comes inside the box is basically the fridge freezer, a divider, 12 volt plug and also an AC adapter right here, AC brick for if you want to pow uh, power it indoors, uh, 120 wise. This is a relatively unique product given its size and capabilities. One of the most important parts is, is that it uses a Danfoss compressor, uh, which is a very uh, German built, uh, not exactly German built, but it's German design. I'm pretty sure many of the compressors now are made in China. But it is a well thought out design and Danfoss has a reputation for being quality and power efficient and pretty powerful in general for cooling this thing down. Keep in mind that the compressor is the heart of the fridge freezer. If you have a crappy compressor then chances are you're going to have an inefficient um, fridge freezer or you're going to have an unreliable one if it breaks down on you. Also other unique features is, is that it uses a Wi-Fi. Um, Typically for most fridge freezers, an example would be the Medic, you would have to pay up to their CFX lines, which in general is pretty expensive, $1,000 and up. Um, and they're also, you have to buy a bigger fridge freezer in order for you to get, probably in their 50 liter range. Um, you can get it now, this, this one has it available in a 20, in, you know, in this 20 liter configuration. Taking a look on the outside of the fridge freezer, as you can see, it looks really sleek. It doesn't look utilitarian, such as, let's say, this Dometic or this Blizzard box, which looks like they're more or less like off-road, off-roady type of um, uh, fridge freezers. This one looks far more sleek. Uh, it's not probably something that belongs inside a car or, uh, you know, a crossover SUV, nothing that's required for, you know, serious off-roading. Uh, having said that, the Iceco does have more specialized fridge freezers for that uh, mindset, uh, such as this Iceco JP50. Opening up the unit, you can go to see such as that pops up. And another uh, little quick thing about quality, or some nice touches, is when you drop it, it is dampened, as so. It is not like on a typical, um, what's it called, a fridge freezer. I can show you on the JP50 over here. Just drops. It's a nice design touch on that part. Um, on the inside, we have the specs on the Iceco, which is right here. What's nice to see is you, it also gives you recommended setting temperatures for water, drinks, seafood, um, quick frozen food and so forth. This side has the specs. Zooming out, what you have is a left side compartment which can be used as a freezer, the right side compartment which can be used as a refrigerator, and if you take out the, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, once you take out the uh, divider, it will become either a, a wholly a fridge or freezer uh, set up. On the left, on the right here, you can be able to see it has an LED light, so you can be able to see this at night. On the LCD panel, as you can see, we have an L and an R, which is left side compartment temperature, right side uh, temperature. In order for you to set this up, keep in mind, when you don't touch anything for I think probably 30 seconds or, and whatnot, it will go into lock mode. So when you start pushing things, it will not uh, change settings on you, which is nice. So in order for you to get out of lock mode, you can do press and hold this. As you can see, everything lights up. You can turn into quick freeze mode, which only applies on the left side of the fridge freezer. Um, if you take out the divider, that option is no longer available. Keep that in mind. Um, for this one, you can be able to adjust freely. This is set in Fahrenheit, by the way. Uh, and on the right side, I have this set up for 35 
and this once it stops blinking that is the current temperature of what it is right now and I'm just going to turn the quick freeze off since I don't want to put ne unnecessary wear and tear on the uh, compressor obviously when you want to use the quick freeze is if you left this one if you didn't pre-cool the fridge freezer and you need to put popsicles or ice cream on this side of the uh, fridge freezer you need to quick freeze it so once you stick it in turn this one on and put on the quick freeze freezer that way it doesn't melt on you in order to uh, figure out what kind of capacity you know a better reference for capacity as I put two of these uh, frozen shakes in here this is I believe 20 ounces on this side we have 14 uh, regular sized water bottles so mix and match this is just a reference you probably might you know put I think in terms of ice cream you can be able to put down your easily your little small Hagen dazs uh, packs I think I think you'd fit four in here or you can be able to put in those um, ice cream popsicles uh, probably two of those thin boxes inside here as well and obviously you have more leverage um, more uh, coverage on this side if you want to use for refrigerator now as you can see here we have this divider it is smart enough to once you remove this divider um, you, you will only have one um, temperature setting since obviously it cannot control separately once you remove the divider there we go as you see it only goes back to 41 degrees and as you can see it, you have more space but obviously you lose the functionality either a this uh, fridge freezer will only become a fridge or only a freezer putting it back in it's smart enough to to know there you go see 1841 one of the new unique aspects of this fridge freezer is it does come with an app typically on higher end units such as the medic you have to purchase their high-end um, fridge freezers such as the CFX line which usually starts around a thousand or comes close to a thousand and it usually has to be 35 liters or quarts and up this one is a 20 quart fridge freezer and I'll demonstrate that right now so I don't have something as clean as a uh, screenshot but if you take a look here it has the car fridge app you pop it open you click the device as you can see here this matches up 1642 this is your current voltage battery level it should be high battery level since obviously I am using the 120 volt AC adapter that it comes with right now so you're running on 120 you can be able to shut off and on there's your on and off turn it on again you can press here you can do settings on the left side you can be able to adjust the temperature and also if you want to turn on the uh, boost mode such as here as you can see it turned blue you can turn it off and does these changes real time Tem temperature conversions um, battery protection I put this typically on low uh, keep in mind I have a secondary battery I don't always although this has a battery protection on board I would not want to do this on the uh, what's it called uh, on your primary battery I would rec always recommend a secondary battery when it comes to uh, battery protection I'll put I'll list out the uh, voltage uh, requirements on this side of the screen and you can be able to stop as you can see on the top right you can choose between changing the right and the left temperate con temper controls and as I change them you can see that it is changing on the left hand side as well this has a temperature convert and battery protection as well if you remove the um, the divider you also remove the uh, left side uh, changes on the app as well so as you can see it's, it it's very low latency you can make changes on the fly. Let me put this thing back. And 
as so as you can see now you have both sides um, temperature available uh, again so that is your preview of the app capabilities now taking into account how you plan to power this inside your car um, obviously if you're at home you're going to be using the uh, adapter the 120 adapter that comes with the unit but when you're in your car I highly recommend as say it again do not use the uh, what's it called primary battery use a secondary uh, battery or a, a power station how I would typically run this setup is I would st obviously stick the 12 volt onto this um, power Yeti and I would use a car charger on this side and power it that way as the refrigerator is turned on it would be constantly charging and once you kill the power on your car it would um, stop charging but your fridge freezer would still continue to work now I will turn on the fridge freezer that way you can be able to see how much watts it takes there we go as you can see I turned on the quick freeze so that way you know what the maximum um, wattage it takes right now it says two but obviously it will um, kick it up once the compressor turns on 38 36 so you're roughly gonna get from 30 to 40 watts when the compressor kicks on on this unit obviously once it reaches the temperature uh, it would go back down um, the output would go back down to zero and then as the temperature rises in the refrigerator freezer again it would turn back it will turn back on okay now looking at the side of the unit you can see we have the 12 volt wire going to goal zero just to, I, I'm showing you this view just so you can be able to see there is a 15 amp fuse right there so if you ever plan to uh, when you go to a long trip make sure you always pop have a few fuses uh, just in case if that ever pops as for the six months that I've owned this I've never had that fuse pop but it's always good to have peace of mind on that um, the next thing is you can see here it has these ventilation holes for the compressor to breathe keep in mind that you need two to three inches of clearance so wherever you put this fridge freezer um, you you have to have that clearance on the sides and on the back next you see the handles which is fairly straightforward you can anybody can easily carry this thing by themselves even when loaded now keep in mind um, the sucky thing about these handles is that they're just meant for carrying they're not meant for strapping down there isn't really a nice way of strapping this fridge freezer down probably you need to get a bigger box or whatever now and you strap a box put this thing inside the box cut holes for the um, for this uh, for the ventilation holes um, but for all the other fridge freezers that I own as you can see here they have some kind of handle that you can strap down if you're gonna go on a long road trip or if there's bumps on that trip this is a crappy handle this is a good handle and this is a good handle too on the Iceco JP50 so one of the downsides is there is no nice way of strapping this thing down um, so you're gonna have to think of a way to obviously you have to load it that way it doesn't less likely to flip over or you're gonna have to put stuff around it which doesn't cover these holes that way it kind of cinches it into place um, it doesn't flip over or do any of those things in conclusion who do I recommend this fridge freezer for I recommend them for uh, light duty use um, for a road trip you know in the back of a crossover SUV or a car um, obviously keep in mind make room for I would recommend a uh, secondary battery because you do not want to be um, you do not want to put all your faith in your primary battery car just leave that strictly for starting and your other accessories do not put a fridge freezer or any other higher drain device on it
Um, I would not recommend this for off-road for obvious reasons. There's no way to strap this thing down. You're going to be forced from cinching it. And let's face it, this thing doesn't look like it can um, withstand the rigors of off-roading. While this one, there, this Iceco um, JP50 can. Just the way that the plastics are... Um, that it's designed for. This is primarily for crossover SUVs and uh, small cars or vans. Uh, I would recommend this for short and medium sized trips. Obviously if you want to have uh, something with freezer you want to have like you know, your ice pop or whatever and you need your water and juices. Perfect. Um, if you're kind of like drive far like for me um, I like going to Ventura to get fish. Uh, typically and also you go to Costco and uh, let's say a Sam's Club with those huge you know uh, packs of meat and pork those value packs I would recommend a bigger fridge freezer since those things can handle that this thing can't really handle a pack well actually let's try this out right now here's a value pack of short ribs as you can see, yeah, it can fit if I wanted it to, but if you have a lot of those, um, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be wishing you had a bigger fridge freezer. We'll leave it at that. Uh, if you have any questions, just put it down on the bottom, and I will uh, try my best to answer it. Thank you very much. Bye.